Hey everybody, Lori Ballen here. Today I'm going to take you into my favorite SEO tool, SEMrush. Now I've been testing several tools and this one has stood the test of time for me. And I want to show you some of the important features of the tool because it is time for another big content push. Recently I went through all of my businesses and I took a look at where all my business is coming from. And it came down to content, 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 whether that content was being used on social media, YouTube, uh, my written blogs, everything comes down to content. And then of course, what we do with the content. So an SEO tool is really important if you are creating SEO content. And that is definitely my specialty is creating SEO content that is designed to rank on the search engines. And that starts with comprehensive keyword research, making sure that I'm finding topics that are um, within the right competition for my domain authority, uh, creating the on-page content and graphics and internal linking and topic clusters, and then the promotion. So this is what I do every day, all day. So I thought it was really important that we take a look at SEO tools so that you can adopt um, one that can help give you a leg up for the new year. Okay. They're all getting very expensive. I have uh, SEM rush, which we're going to go through today and SEM rush. I, I want to say I'm paying for the $99 a month version. And I used to think that was so expensive. And now I'm paying more than that for my AI tools and, um, some of my other live streaming tools. So I guess that is not that expensive anymore. Um, but let me show you what it does and why it's so valuable because out of, out of all the tools that I use, uh, an SEO tool is just irreplaceable. I cannot not have one. Now, if you already have a Hrefs or you're using, um, Uber suggest or, uh, surfer SEO or one of those, then you might have everything you need and, and not need to worry about it anymore, but it might also be a good time to compare. Okay. Now I did, uh, buy the Uber suggest black Friday special so that I could test their platform. And as much as I love Neil Patel and I love his work, I'm not loving, um, all the aspects of Uber suggest. Unfortunately, some of the things are really cool. I love the Chrome extension for general keyword research. It's a pretty good tool, but it doesn't offer anywhere near the comprehensive details, data, statistics, tracking that SEM rush, um, uses. So it's definitely not something I'm going to dump SEM rush to switch over to Uber suggest. I think it has a long way to go yet. Personally, I do, however, love Uber suggests, uh, plat um, the, the user friendliness of it, the aesthetics of it, how it looks. SEM rush is much more developer looking. So that's why I think this video is important. So I can kind of give you a run through of the pieces that I use, and it might give you uh, an understanding of what's actually in the tool that you may not have realized is here. So right out of the gate, I use a dashboard for my websites. Okay. Now I've been floating around with my websites They're, They've been in constant flux this last two years because I took a major, a large website and I broke it up into a bunch of smaller websites to see if the niches outperformed the one larger site. And in retrospect, well, I don't regret anything because I'm, you know, we're always testing and measuring and learning In retrospect, what I learned about myself is I don't have the, the truthfully, I just don't have the desire to build seven websites at one time. And I don't want to be hiring out a massive amount of writers and managing with all of that. So I realized that, that the way I'm growing my business is probably going to be less about building all these individual niche websites and more about just building my larger website and the larger brand. And so that's why some of them look like they're in the red is because I divided them up and now I'm going to put them all back on this one right here. So we're going to watch that one climb as I do that. A lot of work there anyway. So this is where I monitor my websites is in this dashboard here. Um, and what we're going to do is let's just, let's just go ahead and click on my real estate website so we can kind of poke around in there and I'll show you what all the aspects of it are. First thing you have here is your authority score. Now, if you, if that's not, uh, if that's not a, a word you recognize domain authority or authority score, 
I really want you to listen to this piece because honestly, when you're creating SEO content, if you don't understand domain authority, you're going to wind up creating a whole bunch of content that isn't probably going to go anywhere. And in my last several videos, I've led with this or I've explained this in detail and I'm going to do it again because I think um, this was my biggest aha in SEO in the last decade uh, was learning so much more about keyword competitiveness and domain authority. So an authority score is given um, to a website and then there, there's also authority scores for the individual pages, okay? And it basically is kind of a, a rating level for how how your website's going to, to compete with other websites um, for the same search terms, keywords, queries, whatever you want to call those, okay? So Moz first coined the phrase domain authority. This is Moz.com. And it's basically a score that um, is made up primarily of how many backlinks you have on your website, the quality of those backlinks, and how many of those backlinks are coming from unique referring domains. So to put this in layman's terms, uh, what it basically means is you have a website and then there's somebody else has a website. If that website links to you in some fashion, that gives you a backlink, okay? Now there are follow backlinks and there are no follow backlinks. If they give you a follow backlink, that means part of their link equity is flowing out of their website to yours. So it's giving you some of that, um, people call it link juice, if you will, but that link equity flows and it's giving you some of the, some of their score essentially is passing on to you. There's also no follow links, which means no scoring passes, but it still has value because Google says, hey, that website is mentioning that website. So that mention alone gives that website a little bit more um, authority or that writer, that admin, that web admin creator, it gives you a little bit more um, authority in your expertise, let's just say. So those links are valuable, whether they're follow or no follow. Okay. I just want to clarify that. So when you get these links, your authority score will climb or your domain authority will climb. And on a scale of zero to a hundred, with 100 being best and zero being brand new with no authority, most websites are going to fall within the, probably like the 20 to 50 authority range. Once you get above 50, those are generally websites that have earned a lot of backlinks. They're more authoritative. They're probably more aged domains. So as you start a brand new website, you are going to have a score and you're going to want to watch that score. When you go look up a topic, that topic is going to have a score. So for example, let's just say that you wanted to write on the keto diet. So I'm going to do a quick little search here on SEMrush for the keto diet. And this is exactly how I use this tool every day. So how I'm starting this and where we're going with this, this is one of the ways I use this tool every day. Now, what we can see here is that the keto diet has a search volume of 673,000 searches per month. That's amazing. You're like, yes, that is incredible. I want to rank number one for the keto diet. But you can see here it's ranked it's got a 100% keyword difficulty, which means the odds of ranking for the word keto diet are slim to none, almost impossible. It's as high as it can possibly be. Okay. So what we do next is we click on view all keywords, and then we can start looking for keywords that are related to, or even contain the words keto diet that might be less competitive. So this tool here, SEMrush, shows you this keyword difficulty score. How hard is it going to be to rank? And you can rank these by lowest to highest, highest to lowest. What you want to be doing is comparing this to your own domain authority or your own authority score. So as we saw on page one, when I first opened this, my domain authority score, according to SEMrush, and again, you want to use one tool for measuring this domain authority. If you're going to use Moz, stick with Moz. If you're going to use um, SEMrush, stick with SEMrush. If you're going to use Uber Suggest because they all have their own scoring system. Okay. It's not a score coming from Google. 
It's a score coming from that SEO tool that basically ranks how hard it's going to be for you to compete in that space. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to find keywords that are close to your authority score or are easier are lower than your, your score. So what I can see here is here's one that's a 46. My domain authority is a 44. So to me, if my domain authority is a 44, I want to try to stay with um, keyword difficulty of 50 or under. That's just how I go about it. Now, sometimes I can nail something higher, but those are the outliers. The more common uh, ways to rank faster is by choosing keywords that are, are pretty similar to where your authority score is, okay? And so keto diet pills is an example here. All right, keto diet pills. So if I click on keto diet pills, then I can find out more information about that phrase, the global search volume. I can look at the intent. Now what this tells me is it's commercial intent. This person wants to buy something. So if I sell keto diet pills or I have an affiliate relationship with somebody that has keto diet pills, then it's a commercial intent, meaning that person wants to buy something that could be very valuable. If I'm building an information only website and my goal is to rank for um, just to rank my informational content and let Google AdSense run across my website or Ezoic or Monument, whatever ad platform you're using, then I might be able to earn more money since that has commercial intent. I can see here that advertisers are spending a couple bucks per click. So I might be able to make some money if I could rank for something like the best keto diet pills, right? Okay. Now let's even dive further into this. Now we can see all of the terms that are related to keto diet pills. Okay. So I'm going to click, on, I'm going to open that and uh, I can't open a new window. Let's just click on it for a minute and then we'll go back. Okay. So now I'm looking at this going, okay, do I even want to drill down even further? Because I mean, here's an example, keto diet pills, Walmart. So I could actually create a page on my website that says, um, what kind of keto diet pills to buy at Walmart? Or maybe I do a question and answer, does Walmart sell keto diet pills? And then I'm going to um, make a video and go to Walmart and show you all their keto diet pills that they have there. You know, maybe I'm going to talk about their electrolytes pills or their potassium pills or their whatever supplements and things that go with the keto diet. Okay. Keto diet pills, side effects, shark tank, keto diet pills. Okay. So I might want to reference the shark tank keto diet pills and what those are. So what we're doing here is we're taking a, a topic. We started with keto diet and then we drilled down to that long tail phrase that has um, more than three words in it that kind of brings us into a more laser focused topic. So we went from keto diet to keto diet pills, right? And then we can even drill down further. Are keto diet pills safe? You could actually probably create a whole topic cluster around the word keto diet, creating different blog posts for each, or you could do one of the pillar post style blogs that are really long and use all of these items as separate headings. And you're going to write a paragraph on each one. Best keto diet pills on Amazon, best keto diet pills at Walmart. Um, and maybe you're going to talk about the shark tank keto diet pills is going to be a paragraph. And maybe you're going to have a paragraph called how keto diet pills work or do keto diet pills work. And then you could even include a frequently asked questions section at the bottom of your blog and cover any other questions that were answered on here. So this is an example of how I use, um, the SEO SEM rush tool to take one keyword research and really dive deep into a topic. Okay. 
So there's more here. Let me go back for a second. And we're going to, we're still on keto diet pills as our example. If you're in a real estate agent or you're a coach or you're uh, building niche websites, this all works the same. I'm just using keto diet as an example today. Okay. Now down here, we have the SERP analysis and SERP stands for search engine results page. So SEMrush gives us a search engine results page analysis to show us what page one of Google looks like for that term. Okay. Now it has 10 pages. So if you go to Google and you were to type in keto diet pills, these are the top 10 pages that are most likely to appear. Now, local search devices, all of that have some variations, but on average, these are the ones that are showing up on page 10. So here you can actually see the page authority score for the pages that you're competing with. Okay. So domains have an authority score and the actual page has an authority score. And then here you can see how many unique referring domains are pointing at that page. So how many other websites are pointing at that page, referring to that page, and how many of them are unique domains, meaning it's not just one website with 20 links to this one. So for example, here this has a total of 182 backlinks. So 182 pages are linking back to this Walmart. But out of those 182, there's 50 unique websites, unique domains linking. So, so that means some of these domains have more than one backlink pointing at them. This is going to be the key factor is how many of those referring domains, but then also the quality of those referring domains. Are they in the same niche? How high is their authority? Okay. So there's some different things that go into that. Then we can see how much search traffic that website has and how many keywords that page ranks for. So this gives us a quick glance of, you know, what we're really going to be competing against. Now, when I see something like this, a page that has only an 11 page authority score, only 11, and there's only 24 referring domains and only 380 backlinks. And that website's pretty small and new if it's only getting 6,000 monthly searches. That means I could possibly take that spot. And that's the number four spot. Now this one I'd have to look up. I'm not sure why it's saying a zero um, authority score. That's very rare, especially with 51 referring domains. But what this is basically showing me is, yeah, if I go write a great article on keto diet pills and I have a keto diet website, there's a very good chance I could take the number three or number four spot, okay? Probably not going to take number one or number two right now, but I don't know what, if I've got a 44 domain authority, uh, authority score, I could, if my content is better. Okay. So it's giving us, it's telling us that. All right. So these are, these are really cool aspects right out of the gate with looking at this keyword. But what's more is there's actually more tools on here for creating our content. So what we can do over here. So we can go down to the, we're going to go to content. I want to go to content. Here it is content marketing. And we're going to go to the SEO content template. And right here, we're going to type in keto diet pills. Okay. So we use our SEO tool to do a little bit of topic research. We found a topic that we believe we can rank for compared to our authority score and the other authority scores of the um, pages on that domain. And now the SEO content template actually kind of tells us what needs to be on our page when we're creating this content. Okay. So what it tells us if we scroll down here, and again, this is a little geeky, so stay with me. I'm showing you what each one means. It's telling us right here, the average text length word count is 2,954 words. Okay. Remember earlier when I was showing you all those different things we could talk about keto diet pills at Walmart, keto diet pills, at Amazon, do keto diet pills work, shark tank diet pills. 
And I was saying this could either be one long pillar post or it could be a bunch of little ones depending on what our data shows us. Based on the fact that we need a 3000 word article, I'm probably going to put all of those onto one page and really create this great long form content that's all about keto diet pills, what they are, what they do, where to get them, what you need to know about them, okay? Now up here, we also have some semantically related keywords. So basically, what, um, what SEMrush is telling us is the other 10 pages that ranked for the term keto diet pills, all most of them use these phrases as well. They talked about cholesterol levels. They talked about fatty acids. They talked about increased energy. Okay, so when you're creating your blog about the keto diet pills or your article, you might want to go through those and see how you can include those on your page as well. Because if they're listed, Google's probably expecting to see that you also covered that. Basically, Google wants to return the best article, the best page for that person's search query. So if it believes that keto diet pills should be about preventing diseases, then it would expect to see a, a, a section on how these keto diet pills would prevent disease. Of course, what we know is it's not the keto diet pills that are probably going to prevent disease, but potentially eating a ketogenic lifestyle might prevent disease. So however that ends up on your page, okay? And then here we've got more information about the top 10 pages and, um, and how they're ranking. Down here, it tells you to make sure you use the word keto diet pills in your title, keep your title length about 55 characters, and, um, and use keto diet pills in one of your headings. Those are just kind of some generic best SEO practices, okay? Now, there's also a topic research tool in here. So again, we're getting so much uh, so much research in this in this tool. So let's type in keto diet. So remember we said that you have, let's pretend we have a website on the keto diet. Now what's happening is Google's going out and scanning the web for anything related to keto diet. And it's gonna return ideas for us to create topic clusters. So topic clusters are very pow powerful for SEO. And what they do is they allow us to create a whole bunch of different content that are subtopics of a, of a parent topic, okay? And so when you create all of, these all of these different articles and you link them all back to the one major article, that link equity flows up and helps that pillar post rank better. So for example, we have something here called ketone levels. And now if you don't know anything about the keto diet, uh, the keto diet is all focused around ketones. It's something that your body produces when you drop your carbs and you have a certain level of um, these ketones start producing and they give you energy and more brain power, yada, yada. So ketones are going to be a big topic when you're writing about the keto diet. And here, there's this whole section of articles that are all related to ketones. So there's topics, there's subtopics, so topic, ketones, subtopics, how to measure ketones. Those could be two separate articles. And then over here, we have all of the questions that would be related to the keto diet. So at some level, you would want to cover every single one of these pieces about ketones either on separate blogs or all on one blog post, potentially, okay? Remember, we do these smaller ones because the competition level drops. So even though you might be thinking, oh, if I create a 5,000 word blog post, it's all about ketones, then I could rank for the term ketones, the odds are very, very slim because it's gonna be competitive. But if you try to, rock, uh, try to rank for the term, what should your ketone levels be, you have a better chance of getting in because that long tail keyword phrase is going to be less competitive, okay? Let me give you a real estate example. Um, I would love to rank my Las Vegas real estate website for Las Vegas real estate and homes for sale in Las Vegas, of course. 
but you're competing with Zillow and Realtor.com and all of these very authoritative websites with high domain authority. So rather than targeting the keyword phrase homes for sale, I do the long tail keywords, which are things like homes for sale in Summerlin with a mother-in-law quarters. Okay, so I hit all the neighborhoods in Vegas and I work very diligently to rank for specific zip codes and specific neighborhoods with a feature. Uh, single story homes for sale under 400,000 in North Las Vegas. That's actually how people search too. Now, a lot of people when they're first searching, they don't know the area. So they might just be typing in single story home with a pool under 400,000. And if you go and create that page and put a grid of homes for sale on there, you're likely to rank for that page. Now, if you are looking for a real estate website, by the way, here's an example of mine. And this is what I'm referring to. These are actually built by my brothers, Jeff and Paul over at ballonbrands.com. So if you need a real estate website to do all of this, this would be the place to go check out. But if somebody is searching um, for one of those long tail phrases and they find my website, they're going to land, see, for example, let's just say um, million dollar homes. They're going to look at luxury homes. Then they land on a page that's got only houses for sale that would be a million dollars. Okay. So somebody might type, type something in that says um, 7,000 square foot home on a golf course or with golf frontage or something like that. They might not be typing in luxury home or home, but they might type in homes under a million dollars. Okay. So those, those long tail phrases. So this is just another example of those, but look at this related searches, ideal ketosis level for weight loss, ideal ketosis level for weight loss. That's fantastic. That would be a blog worth creating. And it's going to be a long tail and a lot less competitive. Okay. So you can now dive in here and cover more of the subtopics for that topic. So this is a great way to sit down and create all of your um, topic ideas and topic clusters for the year. All right. Also within SEM rush, one of my favorite um, features is that when I'm doing keyword research, so let me show you an example. Let's just say, um, let's just say I need to do um, cost of living, for example. So let's just say on my real estate website, I'm going to do the cost of living in Las Vegas. Okay. Um, let me see if what comes up if I do cost of living Las Vegas. Okay, there we go. So that's a good one. So it tells me the keyword difficulty is yellow. It's possible. So it's within my frame. I've already done this one and I do rank for it, but it's within my frame and 3000 monthly searches. That is a great article to write the cost of living in Las Vegas. That would be fantastic. Now, if I scroll down to view all 408 keywords, I can go through and see which of these keywords do I want to make sure that I include or create content around. And if there's one that I want to save for later, okay, so I'm going to go create the cost of living, but let's just say, say I find the cost of living calculator. I'm going to do a different page for, for some reason, I would click that little plus sign and then I can add it to my list. And then later I can go over to my list and now I've got this whole list of keywords that are on my to do. So I never have to wonder what topic to go create because I've already saved it all in here. And then when I don't want it there anymore, I can just delete it from the list after I create that content. So it's a great, it's like a content calendar. I keep this running list of content that I need to create that I haven't created yet. Okay. Now let's, there's more. Another thing I use this, use um, SEM Rush for all of the time is competitive research. So if I go up back up here to the homepage, um, let's just say, well, there's several ways we can do this. But the first is by typing in a competitor's domain name up here. Okay. So let's just pretend I'm in San Diego and I'm going to do San Diego real estate. I'm not, I'm in Vegas, but let's just. Since it's not my market, let's go to one where I'm not there. Okay. I scroll down 
And I'm looking for um, a, a local real estate agent or company that would be ranking on, you know, I just did San Diego and I keep la putting this guy on example. Let me go somewhere else. Let's do Denver. <laughs> Cause this one top ranking guy, I keep showing him in San Diego. So we're scrolling down. We're not going to use Zillow or realtor.com because they're national websites. We're looking for something more local. Okay. Um, called a banker. Here we go. R E Colorado. So I know that's going to be a local website. It's got a domain authority of 48 mines of 44. So that would be a good competitive, um, in the same ballpark. They're getting 12,351 monthly searches, which is fantastic. So let me click on there. Now I'm going to take their domain name up here, recolorado.com, and I'm going to put that into uh, SEMrush. There we go. And click search. Now we're able to see that website's paid and organic search traffic. So if we want to know what they're spending on advertising, we can go look at that. So this, this website happens to be spending, um, uh, I haven't spent a lot of time analyzing the competitors, but it looks like they're spending $4,000 a month on display advertising. Um, so anyway, they do have ads and you can click through there and you can see what ads they're running and how they're getting their traffic. But I'm not going to look at that today. We're going to stick with the organic which is the um, search engine earned traffic because that's where I specialize, okay? But you can go look at that if you want to. So we can see that their authority score is 50, so we're within the same range, but they're getting a lot of really good search traffic every month. This is a perfect uh, competitor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna click on, they, we're gonna click on view details under top organic keywords. So this competing website ranks for 28,000 keywords related to Colorado, 28,000 keywords. Okay. Now this might also still be too big of a website. You, if you, you might just need to find Denver only or a certain area, but let's stay with this for a second. So then we're going to go to view details and we're going to look at those 28,000 keywords. And then my next move, what I like to do, is I like to look at their top traffic earners and then go down from there. So 64% of their traffic actually comes from their branded domain. So people obviously know RE Colorado um, and are using that, are using that domain or they're driving traffic there, but it's, it's their brand search, which is, um, which means they're doing a lot of branding, but let's scroll down underneath that. I'm going to have to, I've never heard of them. So I'm not sure why that would be the case. So here we've got houses for sale in Colorado, homes for sale in Colorado. Is this the MLS? Is this like Colorado's MLS or something? Maybe I'm not sure. So Colorado homes, um, mortgage calculator, Colorado. Okay. There we go. There's an example mortgage calculator, Colorado. So what I'm looking for, is I'm looking for content ideas for content that is working for a competitor that I have not yet created content for. So if I was in Colorado and I had not yet created a mortgage calculator, I would make sure that I have a page on my website about the mortgage calculator for Colorado. Okay. It's within my keyword difficulty. People are spending money per click. So this would be a valuable piece of content if I were to sit down and create it. Now this one's interesting, best plants to grow in Colorado. Now I would use something like that on my real estate website because I personally believe when you can create local content, you are helping Google establish um, your website as both real estate and local. So I do a lot of best sushi in Las Vegas, best, best best way to get around Las Vegas, best thing to do for your 21st birthday in Las Vegas, best dog parts in Las Vegas, you know, all of those different things because it helps Google establish uh, your expertise. And, and as a real estate agent, your expertise should be local as well. So I would create a blog post called best plants to grow in, in Colorado. So this is an example of how I would use this um, keyword research. 
there's also something over here called a keyword gap that's really cool. And with the keyword gap, you can actually put in your domain here. So let me go ahead and use my real one. I'm gonna do valenvegas.com. This is my domain. And over here, you can add a competitor. Now, this, because I'm already established on SEMrush, I've been using it a while, I've set up my projects, it already knows who my competitors are. And it knows this based on um, uh, the types of keywords we're ranking for, the total keywords we're ranking for, um, they use that similarity to, do, to, to establish who our competitors are. So I'm going to do C Vegas Homes. We're always up there together. Great Las Vegas Homes. Um, I'll do Leslie. Hi, Leslie. And I'll do um, Las Vegas Luxury Home Pro. Okay. Now I'm going to do this in the United States because that's where I'm at is in the United States. And I'm going to click compare. Now what happens is... Um, SEMrush has created this graph and it shows you where you are in comparison with everybody else based on your total search engine traffic. So I'm in the lead here with 20,000 uh, keyword ranking keywords. And then we have the luxury home pro with 9,000 page one ranking keywords. I'm sorry, top 100, top 100 keywords on Google. And then we have, um, C Vegas homes. So you kind of can, can, can get that idea. Now look over here though, here's, here's my top opportunities. So it's saying I could get a lot more traffic if I would rank higher for Las Vegas homes. I could get traffic if I would rank higher for McDonald Highlands. That's a good one. Okay. So if I'm a real estate agent and I say to myself, okay, how could I do better with McDonald Highlands? I would either use my SEO, SEO tool, or I would even go over here to Google and type in McDonald Highlands. And I'm going to take a look at what's ranking on here. Zillow, number one. Okay, lots of images. So have I gone out to McDonald Highlands and taken a bunch of pictures? Have I gone out to McDonald Highlands and taken any video? Could I send my team out there? Do we have any listings out there? Do I want to hire a photographer to go out there? Okay, so top ranking is Review Journal, Redfin, Move to, Point to Homes. Okay, now look at this set of suggested questions. Who lives in McDonald Highlands? What's the zip code for McDonald Highlands? McDonald Highlands real estate. So I would go McDonald Highlands homes for rent. I would go look at my page. It's all about McDonald Highlands now and see, did I cover that? Can I do better? Can I get more in depth and see if I can do better for that page? This is the Uber suggest plugin here on the right hand side, which is showing me other suggested um, terms in here. So, that might be worth me going after. There's 1,900 monthly searches with a buck 79 cost per click, according to Uber Suggest. These are all estimates. These keyword tools are estimates only. If you use Uber Suggest and then you hop over to SEMrush, you're going to see different um, things. They're all just kind of within the ballpark. They're estimation tools. That's the best we're going to get. Okay. But that's really cool. Now, down here, I can also see the keywords that, uh, that we're all ranking for. Or I can go right here and I can even click missing. So now this is going to show me what keywords the other websites are ranking for, but I'm not in the top 100. Sun City Summerlin Homes. I know why not. That's because I split my website up and started building a Summerlin website separate. That's a whole nother story. So if I want to go back and try to rank for that, Veer Tower, Seven Hills, The Ogden, those are opportunities, 55 plus communities, 89149 homes for sale. If it's saying, hey, we don't see you in here for this term, but all of these guys are ranking for it and we're all within this, a similar domain authority, I'm just missing opportunity. I need to go after it and I need to use my tools to find out why am I not ranking for Queens Ridge? I created a page about Queens Ridge. Did I put any content on there? What else do I need to do? Images, videos. I need to go get some backlinks. Maybe I need to tell a story about Queens Ridge. Maybe I need to go put in real estate statistics about Qu Queens Ridge. Maybe I need to do a weekly real estate report or a monthly real estate report for Queens Ridge. Whether it's written, dynamically created word updates, or I, I put somebody on the team in charge of it, whatever. These are all opportunities to go after. And I wouldn't know that if I didn't have SEMrush, okay? And then um, there's a lot more here, but I want to show you one more thing that's really powerful with SEMrush. 
With SEMrush, you're able to create projects and your project is your domain name. So you go in here and you create your project, okay? Now, what's gonna happen with your projects are you can now run SEO audits, okay? So down here, we have something called a site audit. The site audit is going to scan your website and it's gonna tell you where you can improve with your technical SEO. So right now, according to this, my site health score from zero to 100 is 87. I haven't worked on this one in a little while, 87%. Says I have 143 errors. Those are the most serious. I have 42,000 warnings. Those warnings sometimes are not even um, anything to be concerned about, but I go in and look at them and see what it is that it's telling me as a warning. And then uh, notices are like, not a big issue at all, but let me show you this. If, if I look down here, I've got 3,740 crawled pages, but 49, I got 49 broken links in there. So I would click on 49. This is, this is, I, I need to go do some work in there, obviously. And so here's an example. If somebody were to go to my page, that's about the trails in Summerlin and they were to click that link, it's going to go to a 404 page which means it's a broken page. So I need to go in there and fix that just in case somebody were to find that, okay? Now, sometimes these might be links that you ditch that page, you don't care, nobody's gonna find it, you're not worried about it. And you can actually hide those from here so that they won't show up again, okay? But in other times, you might wanna fix those so that if somebody actually finds them, they go to the right page, okay? Now, if we go to errors, it says here, these are my broken links. I have 45 pages returning that error code. And then if there's anything else on here that I wanna fix. Now, some of this stuff is just gonna be way over the average person's head. So this is where you wanna bring in a technical SEO specialist or maybe go research some videos on just that one item that you might be having, um, that you might be struggling with. Again, my brothers, Jeff and Paul at Ballon Brands can help with some of this. Um, they mostly specialize in the same things I do, which is the on-page SEO content more than um, too much of the technical SEO, but they do some of it. So it's worth talking to them, especially if you're already using them for your website, okay? But this is great because I wouldn't know this if I weren't in here looking at it already. So these SEO audits, um, are really important. You can also set up an SEO, uh, SEO audit report so that it'll send you each month. And then you get this PDF and you can go, oh, okay, I need to go fix that. I need to go fix that. And you can put those on your task list or hand them off, give them to somebody else. There's also a super detailed comprehensive tool for backlinks. So if you want to get backlinks, spend some time on it, measure how many you have, there's a backlink outreach tool that you can use to go out and get more. There's a social media calendar. There's so much more in this tool, but I wanted to just get you started with some of the main pieces that I'm using this SEO tool and why I think it's worth 99 bucks. Um, and I can't imagine not having it. It's just so important. If nothing else, just figuring out the right kind of content to create because SEO content is not created equally. It has to do with your domain authority, your backlinks, um, your topic clusters, your linking strategy, and you've got to start with the research before you can ever get to the point where you're, you're actually on page creating the content. All right. I hope that was helpful today. Link below to check out SEMrush. I'm Lori Ballin. Thanks for joining me today.